Hey everybody, this is International Master David Proust for Chess.com and today you're going to learn an important strategy which is how to prevent your opponent from castling. Now the reason why you would prevent your opponent from castling is because then their king would be stuck in the center and you could attack it all game long or all game short hopefully. But that is the subject for some other videos which we also have. So first things first, you need to learn how to prevent your opponent from castling and then you can go check out some videos about how to finish off their king. So here is the most obvious but also not the best way to prevent your opponent from castling kingside. You can kamikaze sacrifice on f7. And there's a couple other variations of how you could do that, how you could sack something in a way that forces their king to capture and, and then not be allowed to castle. But this is the simplest, right? If you just bring your bishop out straight like this, your opponent will probably play a good developing move with their knight, you know, attacking your pawn and controlling the center, and you can just play this terrible move. Bishop takes f7, and once their king has moved, they can't castle anymore. However, this is completely ill-advised, because after you play this, and this, and castle, and they play bishop c5, you don't really have any kind of attack. Your opponent has far more pieces in the game, and he's preparing to move his rook to one of these two squares and then put his king in the corner, at which point he'll really be laughing. So the idea of taking on f7, it comes up, but you don't want to do it in a totally bad kamikaze kind of way. Here is a slightly better way to do it that does come up like this. from a king's gambit. This is a very aggressive opening, but here you can sack your bishop and you've got much better chances than before because you're already preparing a pretty strong attack. And there's a variety of examples in the king's gambit where that happens. But now let's turn to something more serious really than material sacrifice. So here you are as black and white is threatening to capture a pawn on c6, right? So you could just play bishop d7 to defend it, or you could take on d4. But one strategy you can do in chess is sometimes to ignore your opponent's threat if you see sort of a counter that you can do. So in this position, black could just castle. And um, now white will take, 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 and grab his extra pawn while attacking your rook and pawn which looks potentially dangerous for black, but what black realized was that they were slightly ahead in development if they sacked the pawn on c6, and that in this resulting position, they could sack more material and prevent white from castling kingside as compensation for that. So what black plays in this position is bishop to a6, and you cut white off on this diagonal. Now, if he had, you know, his knight or bishop on the king side, they could probably deal with that problem by blocking on e2, right? But in this case, it's going to be extremely challenging for white to try to castle this game. So that is a technique. And um, the sample game about attacking strategy with king stuck in the center starts from this position. So you can see more about this position in that other example. So cutting off the diagonal is a good way to keep the king from castling. Now, here's another good way to keep a king from castling, and that is to open the e-file. Sometimes it's hard to get control of this diagonal from the very, very beginning, right? This would be like what we saw before, trying to grab this diagonal. Sometimes it's hard to get full control of that diagonal early on in the game because they can block or they can even just fight back with their pieces. Another important technique to try and stop a king from castling is to try and score a check on him by opening up the main file. So here... The placement of black's knight and queen allows white to strike with a very strong move, knight to d5. Black has to trade, and now white has the file open. And so the game continued like this. Now white develops the bishop and connects his rooks. And so even though black controls the e1 square, white now has two rooks here. And so he's going to make a sacrifice of a rook to keep the black king stuck in the center. And that is a famous technique because this is from a game played by Bobby Fischer. And that's a really good one to keep in mind. Now, let's show another thing, which is combining the two. This is from Paul Morphy's play. In this position, he combines 
opening the diagonal to keep the king from castling legally and opening the e-file to make check attack threats immediately on the king. And that works really well in positions where your opponent might try and block on e7. So he starts with e5 after black's bad move knight f6, which just walked into this e5 move. And black takes and Morphe puts his bishop on a3, preventing the king from castling. And black is in dire trouble at this point. And the game continued like this with queen b3 threatening checkmate on f7, king d7, queen e6 mate. So black sacked a pawn. And in this position takes like this. And I forget which rook he put on e1 in this position, but I think you get the idea that he's using this diagonal plus this file to keep the king from castling and to jumpstart a brutal attack. Now, one more example of trying to score a quick check. If you can score a check that your opponent can't capture or block, they're going to have to move their king. That's the only other way to get out of check, and that is going to keep their king in the center. So what should white play in this position here? Well, absolutely, white should take on d5 with the knight, even though it strengthens black's slightly weak pawn on e4, because after knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, Bishop b5 check, the black king will now not be able to castle. He'll defend by blocking with the bishop, you'll take it, he'll take it, and now his king is a target and white is going to attack with queen b4, rook c1. And finally, another way to prevent your opponent from castling, this one comes up the least, but I'm still going to mention it, is to displace their rook. If you can make your opponent move the rook, then you prevent castling at least to that side. So in this position, from opening theory, white plays e5, even though black has the seemingly very strong counter d5, attacking the bishop and improving black's development. But now white takes, takes, and he can capture on g7, and this means black will not be able to castle kingside. So white has prevented black from castling to that side by attacking the rook. So those are your important techniques for preventing castling. Capturing on f7 or some other square where the king has to recapture himself and then he can't castle. Taking a diagonal that cuts the king off by controlling one of the squares he needs to castle through. Scoring a check on the king that causes him to move and thus keeps him from ever castling. Or displacing the rook so that it will be illegal to move to castle onto the side where the rook has moved. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you around on chess.com.